When despair about the world grows in me, on me grows an ecology. Any part on my body is precedent. My eyes exemplify the rippling scene in shallow pools inhabited by the smallest lives, even singular cells, and where roaming animals refresh themselves. All are welcome to rest around my eyes and whatever has taken root. At each of my collarbones is a chasm with shade beneath our blood vessels and nerves that assist my structure. Unheard of colors are seen on the flora and fauna found on and inside me, a terrain of musculature and fatty deposits. The rolling of my hips is a place of relaxation. The pits of my eyes to sources for watering. I always spill essential materials when trying to make my love comprehensible. Blooms extend from damper regions, so beehives later appear, almost little economies in air. My eardrums may rupture from their buzzing, but I've been busy too, marking my methods of self-preservation. This includes replenishing my fluids so that you can find me fecund. The hollow of my groin attracts forms known for their resilience throughout the seasons. A few are familiar, though often they are not. My legs, covered like others, with a light down, have hardened from everyday activities and curtailing my terror. These legs are negotiated by climbers and traversers, intent on lengthy journeys. There, they may learn obedience around the places I am tattooed, a scarring synonymous with testimony. Any living thing can approach me, but I would never let them grovel at my feet because it is always my feet that resist my conscience. You must take me as just one erotic and neurological, sensate and creative totality. One nose, two eyes, two arms, two legs, ten fingers, ten toes. Now my description here becomes presumptuous. I have not recently verified these figures. When despair about the world grows in me, on me grows an ecology.